Anything we hear, know or believe in is all because we chose to. That is what human nature is and frankly that trait is now very commonly used by propagandists to influence their audience. Hello everyone, my name is Disha Gupta and this is my presentation on how propaganda is being used by the Indian government to win the upcoming elections. Let's start with the basics. What is propaganda? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it is any information of a misleading nature used to promote a political cause. For the sake of this presentation, let's put it this way. Any propaganda works best if used in the form of emotions, and in a more relevant sense, it is done by a selective use of facts. To put this theoretical information into a more practical context, here is a current political situation which I will be analysing for this presentation. As of today, India is not only the biggest democracy of the world, but is also culturally diverse. Unlike other developed countries, India still lacks the access to education, forcing more than half of the population to be illiterate. Now, how exactly does that relate to propaganda? Well, for any political party to convince more than 830 million people to vote for them, a single tactic that can convince majority of them needs to be used. And now that we've established education is in the common ground, parties use another strategy. Regardless of the age, religion, culture or background of an individual, the citizens of India demonstrate one common characteristic, emotions. While the extent to which they are emotional or sentimental might differ, in one way or the other it is present in every citizen and the government has been using that trait they carry in order to influence them. Moving on, it wouldn't come as a surprise saying that cinema has a huge influence on people in shaping opinions. As a fact, the Indian cinema has grown from 68 billion rupees in 2010 and is expected to go as high as 140 billion rupees by 2020 in terms of revenue, which shows its increasing presence in the lives of people. Given that the reach of Indian Indian film industry is so wide, it only seems obvious that the current government wanted to choose us as the platform to invoke the emotions of the citizens to fulfill their own political agendas. Let's have a look at some examples to get a better insight about how political parties had and still are propagating a scenario like that. In January 2019, a movie named Uri, A Surgical Strike, was released. The movie was based on the much controversial terrorist attack that took place in Uri, Kashmir two years ago, where 19 unarmed Indian soldiers were killed. The attack was considered not only brutal, but was treated as a question mark on the Indian army. The surgical strike that took place right after the attack on Uri was India's response to the attack in which a team of Indian soldiers were sent to Pakistan and eight terrorist launch pads were destroyed. While the extent of the reality cannot be confirmed, the story in the movie was projected in a very too good to be true scenario and was overtly exaggerated. The irrelevant use of anti Pakistan slogans and the Prime Minister's heroic role in the movie clearly gave away its true intentions. While critics state that the movie was simply a disclosure to what happened, it can be argued that it was a mere propaganda to make citizens think of the government as superheroes in this situation. Another example of propaganda in the film industry is the movie The Accidental Prime Minister, which is a story of the former Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. The entire movie appears to be a mocking to the opposition party, Congress, as Dr. Singh is projected as a puppet in the hands of the opposition's party leader, Sonia Gandhi. Any person who would watch the film would automatically form a very negative and biased opinion about the opposition party and favour the current government and that is exactly what happened. The ruling party BJP, without directly getting involved into anything and simply propagating, catered more votes from the citizens than they ever could gather in a direct manner. Another very obvious example of a propaganda in films is the upcoming biopic on the current Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. The movie is based on the incredible life journey of the Prime Minister, which started from being an uneducated boy who served tea in small areas located in Gujarat all his childhood to a man who later became the leader of the country. The trailer of the film was launched and immediately got very positive and sympathetic reactions from the public, given the context of the film. However, the Election Commission banned the film until the end of elections, saying that the film channeled a very extreme level of propaganda and it cannot be used until the elections are over because of how its background was. Now let's look at this in a more analytical way. All the movies stated above have one thing in common. They're completely or partially based on real-life incidents or stories. That checks for the part that states propaganda is based on certain facts. Let's move on to the next part. What is the message 
that these films are trying to showcase. These films seem to appeal to the audience in an emotional way. The first one by creating aggression and bringing out the patriotic emotions in the citizens. Second, by mocking on the kind of people the country would be led by if the citizens voted for Congress. And third, by sympathizing by the life story of a prime minister. And as we know, propaganda works best when used in emotions. And the final analysis. As stated in the beginning, a propaganda has a political cause behind it. And in this case, the cause is the upcoming 2019 elections. And engaging with Bollywood fits in the context where the current government is indirectly gaining a lot of votes because of this propaganda, which I think has proven to be quite successful. Now, while some people believe that these movies are purely made for no other purpose than entertainment, and it is a good sign they're informative as well, it can be argued that the Indian film industry has seen a significant rise in the development of nationalistic movies since the late 2018, and this sudden rise would definitely go unnoticed had the elections not been in line. As I mentioned in the beginning, we believe what we want to believe. A country whose majority of voting citizens are the youth, the film industry is the most convincing platform for any political leader to approach and influence the audience without even directly talking to them or misleading them. And that is exactly what the government is currently doing. I would like to conclude by saying that even though the nature of this propaganda isn't entirely negative, the only problem that arises is that since the end result is to secure votes, political parties are now mixing propaganda with fake news and that is impacting the credibility that they uphold while giving out any information. Thank you very much for listening.